Welcome to the R video tutorial on the susceptible, exposed, infected, and recovered model. This is using the code that we used from the last video, which used the code from the last video. So if you haven't watched those yet, you might want to go back and get them. I don't really want to reinvent the code every single time. I just want to demonstrate how to go through this as we work our way to being able to model the COVID-19 data, which uh, we'll get to later. Now, this is part one because there's really two versions of this model, and I'm just going to make the first version and then we'll go to part two which we'll add a little bit more in but we won't continue with because the data doesn't match up with that all right so if you remember from the last time we had initial values we had our s which is our population size this is roughly the population of the united states we had here's one infected person and we have zero recovered as the initial states so as we started this this is what we started with and we had two parameters, alpha and beta. Alpha is basically the transmission rate. If every uh, infected person touched every susceptible person. So it's a really, really tiny number. Then here we have beta is the sort of the proportion of the people who become go from being infected onto being recovered. So once they're recovered, they can't keep uh, infecting other people. So what we want to do is we want to add in this sort of group of people who have been exposed they're infectable i mean in the sense of they can go and give you the infection however they aren't sick so are infected now we're going to really consider them as being sick or confirmed to be uh exposed to it and uh which is more like the data what we have so we're going to add another category here we're going to call it e0 and we're going to say well, let's we started off with 10 exposed people so initial exposed people. So these are people who are carrying the virus and they don't know it and they're spreading it around. So this is the initial recovered. And again, there aren't anybody recovered at the beginning because we're modeling this epidemic. Now what we're gonna need is another parameter here, which governs how people go from the exposed category to the infected category, okay? From the I'm carrying it to I'm sick category. So we're gonna add another parameter here. I'm gonna call it gamma one. And I'm just gonna make it, I don't know, 1 14th as well right now. Uh, or maybe even one seventh. How about that? So you could think about it as a seventh of the people who are exposed, then will transition on into actually being sick. Okay. On any day. So if you're exposed, there's a, about a one seventh chance that you will move to this other state. Now notice I added the state here because it goes between being susceptible and being sick. So I'm going to add this in here my exposed group. And now I actually have to change my equations a little bit because now these don't quite make sense. So I'm going to have E0 is in here. Again, we can do max because we are going to be subtracting out of it. We're going to take our current number that we have and we're going to add to it the people who become exposed to this. So we're going to say E and right now in this model we're going to assume that if you're sick you're quarantining yourself now there's lots of flavors of this how well maybe people could move directly you know maybe we should put in here the people who are also infected maybe we should uh, this is but we're trying to be as simple as possible here so people have moved into this state and then they're going to go to the state via uh gamma one which is this is the group that is moving out of being exposed to being sick. So this gets changed here. Okay. So here we're going to change this up. We are going to add in gamma one times E zero N. Now there's lots of flavors of this. If you know other flavors of this, don't roast me saying, Oh, you did the wrong thing. I'm trying to demonstrate how you think about this and how you would add these categories in. And yes, there are lots of different flavors that you can do. Now I have four categories now, so I need to put this in here as my four categories. So people will move from the susceptible, so they get subtracted out, and then they move to the exposed. These are the people that are walking around sick. Well, they're not sick, but they're, they're spreading it. And then a certain proportion of them will then move on 
to become infected, meaning sick. Then we have these, and I have to put an N on this one, um, and an N on this one. So if I didn't, so these are all together here. So I've got this. These moved out to being sick, and then the people who are sick then move to being recovered. Okay, so the path here is I pass through one state to get to the next state to get to the next state, which may or may not be realistic. You might have people, you should say, well, maybe the susceptible people run into sick people, not just the exposed people. But we'll worry about that later. All right, so now I'm going to change my uh, outputs here so that I have each one of these. So out one, I and four is going to, four, if I can type it, we're going to put in here, uh, this is R0 now. Now I can plot my picture here. i got to change things up a bit because this was my recovered, and I want to keep those green. My, I want to keep the sick people red, and I'm going to make these people orange. So our exposed people are dangerous, so... We're going to give them the orange color because they don't know they have it. And we can see how this affects the dynamics. Okay. Now remember, whenever you run these models, you got to run it all the way from the top at the moment because we are actually changing the values as we go through and then storing them off. So when I get to the end, the zeros are all different values. So if I highlight everything... And then run it. Maybe it'll blow up. Maybe it won't. And it worked. Okay, now my scale is way off here because of not everybody actually became infected. If you look at this, my scale is off. So now I need to fix my scale on my plot, which is a good thing. So we're learning things as we go along. And maybe these little errors that it's doing, or they're not errors, but they're teaching us something about this. So I'm going to make the Y limit equal to C. And it's going to go from zero all the way up to, well, I'm just going to take the total number of people there are. That's the most there could be. I'm going to put these in here. And then I'm going to run all of it again so I can see the whole picture. And now we can zoom into this. And you can see here, this black line, these are the susceptibles. Not everybody catches the disease in this. Okay, because people are quarantining themselves after they become sick. And that's part of the reason. They're only being susceptible, or the exposed people are only spreading it around so long before they've moved out. And some of them are sick. And maybe what we could do is add them to the recovered as well. So that's something we can do in part two, which is saying, well, the people who are exposed, not all of them are going to go directly to being sick. Some of them will become recovered. So these are just more dynamics. And notice these dynamics look more and more and more like the pictures that you're seeing in the news about the COVID-19. All right, so we'll move down to that in the next video. See you there.